All right, hello everybody. This is Ginny and Anki, and we are here today to talk to you about fruit generation using generative adversarial networks, which we did not talk about in class, but Anki and I thought they were really interesting, so we decided to work with them for our final project. So our goal for this project was to generate realistic looking fruits using uh, generative adversarial networks, or GANs for short, and see how realistic we can make them look. We also wanted to experiment with combining two or more fruits together and see what output the model gives us. And also we wanted to understand more about how GANs work and what types of images and inputs and hyperparameters work best and would produce the best results for us. So as I mentioned earlier, we didn't talk about GANs in class, but they were mentioned in one of the paper presentations. To explain it again, a GAN is a generative model that is essentially two neural networks put together. The generator takes in what starts as random noise and then tries to produce images based on that random noise, while the second piece of the model, which is the discriminator, trains on the data by trying to tell the fake images produced by the generator apart from the real ones in the training data. The generator is essentially a forger, while the discriminator is more like the detective trying to catch the forger by telling what the forger has made. By training these networks together, they force each other to improve until the discriminator can't tell which images are fake anymore. At that point, we can take the images the generator produces and say, okay, this is a reasonable apple. So our data set was taken from Cattle. It's a data set called Fruit360. And it would consist of, 90, of around 90,000 images and 131 different types of vegetables and fruits. And the, the way that the images were collected was the researchers rotated the, the fruits and vegetables and took images of the fruit as it rotated. And this led to a lot of different varying images of the fruits and vegetables. And this just led to a lot of variety in our data set. So we decided to do most of our work with apples, specifically apple Brayburns, and we spent most of our time deciding which hyperparameters in our GAN model could be tweaked to give us better results. So the major things we look at, we looked at for this presentation are things you would remember from your homework assignments, which would be batch size and the number of epochs for training our discriminator and generator. Uh, we also had a new parameter essentially called latent space, and the latent space is in, in a GAN is essentially an arbitrarily defined vector space that the generator model draws points from using a Gaussian distribution. During training, the model learns to assign meaning to these latent points until we eventually create something the generator can turn into a plausible apple. We also did experiment with changing dropout values as we had a dropout layer in our models, but most of our tests were done with a dropout value of 0.4. So we also tried to experiment with multiple different fruits where we combined in this case, apples and bananas. And we can see in the results here that they look pretty good. Uh, we have a lot of images of just bananas, but we also have images of um, thing, images that look like slugs that are supposed to be combinations of apples and bananas. So we aren't super sure how plausible our model is right now for this specific purpose. We just created such um, non-fruit-like images, but it would be interesting to look at where this would go if we do it our model specifically with this purpose. So instead of our evaluating ourselves based on error, we ended up making a survey to see if real people could tell the difference between our apples and fake ones, as the pictures are or our apples and real ones. As our pictures are somewhat low quality, as you can probably tell, we gave people one apple from each of our various test runs to see which hyperparameter values the participants thought were better. People did find the top apple most real, which suggests that the latent space and the batch size were more important than the number of epochs. If you remember back a couple of slides ago, we showed you a picture of what we thought were the best results. And that essentially had all the same parameters, except it was trained on about 100 more epochs. Um, and our second apple on the slide was considered to be the worst overall, even more so than its closest counterpart, which was an apple with a latent space of one and a batch size of 128. This suggests that perhaps the batch size was the most important factor here because the apple with half of the batch size of that second apple on the slide was rated a lot more realistic. For our future work, we want to be able to run a model on all the fruits in our data set, but that proved to be very computationally infeasible because to load just one uh, fruit into our data set, uh, from our data set into the model, it takes around five to six minutes. So loading 131 different fruits and vegetables would take a very long time and also would take a lot of computing power, which we simply didn't have. We also wanted to find a way to make our images a higher resolution because that would allow us to compare them to 
more um, like images of fruits that are taken from say a, a mobile phone that would um, make it look more realistic. Also, we wanted to improve the realism of our images. And as we saw in our case where we combined apples with bananas, they didn't look very realistic. They looked like not, not like fruits at all. We want to improve that in our model and try and make the fruits look much more realistic and actually look like fruits. Um, so yeah, that's our presentation. Thanks. Yep. Thanks all for watching.